to the fourth reflection around the life of Charles Whitfield and his legacy for our Baptist churches in the northeast of England. I'm here today at Rowley Baptist Church. Now Rowley, along with Hampsterley and Stocksfield, all trace their roots back to one church that was planted originally in 1652. A man called Thomas Tillam, who came to Hexham Abbey as the lecturer, uh, but who was a Baptist by convictions and who started baptising those who were converted through his itinerant preaching ministry. Well, over the years, that group of believers who established themselves as a church divided and separated to three congregations, all linked together, but in the Tyne Valley, the Derwent Valley and the Weir Valley. And over time, those congregations came to be settled in Hindley, at Hindley Farm, here in Rowley, and then at Hampsterley. And it was this church with three congregations that Charles Whitfield was called to be the pastor of in 1771. He preached with a view in both Hampsterley and in Rowley. And so both congregations together, along with Hindley, who were connected with Rowley, uh, had to agree together to appoint him as their minister, which they did with great enthusiasm. Now, Hampsterley at that time had a congregation, a membership of about 50 people. And in the three years following Whitfield's appointment, because he was an evangelist as well as a leader of the church congregation, that church doubled in size. Another 50 people were added into membership. The church became uh, considerably larger their worship services could attract up to 150 or 200 people. How they crammed into such a small space, I don't know. Use your imagination. But one of the challenges was that Whitfield was finding the workload was getting too great for him. In addition, he was caring for a very sick wife. In fact, his wife died not long after he had become the minister and he was left to take care of their children. And so Whitfield proposed for his own sanity, uh, for his own ability to, to get the work done, that Rowley and Hindley separated off and became a separate church, independent from Hampstead. That was very reluctantly agreed to by Rowley and Hindley. They wanted Whitfield, they loved Whitfield, they saw the power of his ministry, but reluctantly they said yes. And so Rowley and Hindley appointed a Mr Ross as their new minister while Whitfield took charge at Hampsterley. And the churches continued to flourish. Lovely to hear a story of church planting, of a church growing through the ministry of its minister and the whole congregation in its outreach. A church being mission-minded, seeking to share the good news of Jesus Christ, of seeing people come to faith, to follow and become disciples and to be discipled as followers of Christ. Whitfield was a pastor, but he was a pastor very much in the spirit of what pastors really should be. We often have in our mind the idea that a pastor, a shepherd, is somebody who looks after the sheep within the church. But Jesus made it very clear, I have sheep to call who are not of this sheepfold, he said. That to be a pastor in the manner of Jesus is always to be missional, is always to look out beyond the current sheepfold, is always to seek to bring more sheep in to be part of the community of faith. That's what a pastor is really to be about, a missionary discipler of God's people. Whitfield was that kind of person. Would that we have pastors not just those that we appoint as ministers, but throughout our congregations. Those who care deeply, those who are able to live in spite of their own family circumstances as Whitfield had to live with. Those who care for the nearest and dearest, but also are able to extend that care to others. And are bold about sharing our faith and seeing others coming to faith. Would you be that kind of pastor? Would your church appoint and recognise those kind of of pastors, outward-looking, evangelistic, nurturing, discipling, caring pastors. As we reflect on the life and ministry of Whitfield, may all of our churches grow in that pastoral gift, that missionary pastoral gift. 
Let's pray as we consider these things. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our pastors, for those who care for us, those who appoint as ministers, those in our leadership teams, those friends and companions in the Christian journey. We thank you for those who help us in the journey of discipleship, of following Jesus and working out what it means day by day in daily life. And may you energise us to do that for others in our churches. But Lord, may you grow and raise up and work in us such that we have a zealous missionary pastoral gift in our churches. That we have pastors who are pastors to the community around us, who are pastors to those who are suffering in this pandemic, who are pastors to those with mental health difficulties, pastors to the bereaved who have lost loved ones through COVID, pastors to those who've lost work and a future is uncertain, pastors who will point people to Jesus and help people to discover the life that Jesus has. Can we, Lord Jesus, be these kind of pastors in this age, in the manner of Whitfield, in our own day, in our own way, to the glory of your name we pray. Amen.